Hey guys, Dan again with Pain Free You. Yes, I'm wearing the same shirt as yesterday, but that's just because sometimes I get in a roll and shoot a few videos and didn't feel like running in and changing my shirt. Anyway, this one is about gratitude and neuroplasticity. And so why does gratitude actually work? Why does a gratitude practice actually stick and work? Well, if you make it a regular practice, we are basically teaching our brain to focus on things that are positive and good and things we appreciate, right? And if you're listening to those cicadas, they're ugly bugs and they're, you know, their shell gets stuck on trees and everything, but um, it creates a really cool vibe out here. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for lots of things. Um, so why does gratitude work? And why does neuroplasticity have anything to do with that? Well, again, neuroplasticity and how the brain works is when we focus on something over and over and over again, the brain says, well, this is something that Dan is focusing on all the time, so I better get better at it. And so we've got these neural pathways and neuroplasticity is the connections that are made um, to get more and more efficient at whatever we're putting a priority on. So if we're putting our priority on gratitude and things we are really glad is in our life, what we're doing is we're teaching our brain to focus on the good stuff. And then what happens is, I, I say it all the time, what we focus on grows and magnifies. So look, neuroplasticity in this brain science can work for us or against us. If all day long all you're doing is thinking about your pain and everything that's wrong with your life, that will tend to make some new connections around that negativity and the pain. And the brain will get more efficient at creating these pain signals. And the more you think negative, the more you think negative, right? And it's not just, you know, haphazard that, oh, Tommy's a really negative person. He's always thinking negative. He's always talking about negative stuff. He's literally taught his brain to fire those connections that keeps him focused on looking for and really, you know, staying in that negativity. So gratitude is an important practice to do. Um, it's a great thing to do when you first wake up, when you're laying down to bed, and frankly, any time during the day that you're aware of something that's beautiful, cool, fun, whatever it may be, um, be grateful. Find three things in the morning, three things at night, any time during the day. Keep a journal, a gratitude journal, right? Because literally what you're doing is rewiring your brain to stop focusing on the pain or symptoms or negative crap in our lives. And you're literally teaching your brain to change and to be more positive. And this isn't the whole new agey, you know, positive thinking, yay. Look, there's, there's truth to it, but this science and neuroplasticity is kind of why it works and how it works. So look, our brain can either work for us or against us. For us, if we're focused on what we want to create, whether it be goals, purpose, meaning, joy, fun, right? The more you look for fun, the more you're going to have. And in a video uh, from a day or two ago, you know, the, uh, the one where I was talking about conditioned response, and I was singing, I feel good, right? I'm not going to do it again. I'll, I'll save you from further punishment of my singing. But you look for reasons to have a good time. You look for ways to make yourself smile or laugh. And I know a lot of us folks are going through this stuff on our own. Or we have spouses or family members that just don't get it. Right? So we kind of have to take ownership for ourselves. That if nobody around us is making us laugh, there's humor everywhere. Everywhere we look. There's a lot of ridiculous things in this world. And so I would really encourage you to take ownership of making yourself happy. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Um, the other thing is if you ever find yourself saying 
I'll be happy when my pain's gone. Maybe you're still in pain because you're choosing not to allow any happiness into your life. Right? And this is a common theme with me. We got to live. We got to start choosing joy and choosing life over just this staying stuck in this well of depression about our symptoms and this fear and that obsession. We literally get obsessed with our symptoms and pain. And I'm here to tell you that obsession with that is not going to help. How about getting obsessed with creating the life you want? Even start while you're in pain or while your symptoms are there. Look, there's a lot of things we can do even while we're hurting. We can get on the phone and talk to somebody. And if we choose not to talk about the symptoms the whole darn time, you know, we can choose to have a good time in that conversation. Even though we might be laying on our back on the floor hoping our back will decompress a little bit, right? So again, a lot of this is about choosing and moving forward as opposed to looking at where you are and feeling stuck. So gratitude, it's a great practice to undertake. Do it a little bit each day, a little bit each day, morning, night, at minimum, look for three things you're grateful for. Even if it's something as simple as I'm grateful to have a, a bed to sleep in tonight. And I'll tell you, I know a young gentleman who's 26 or 27, and a uh, guy I'm friends with. He literally ran into a bunch of bad luck. His car broke down. He couldn't get to work. He, got, he was late, got uh, laid off from work because he couldn't get there, and then he had a tough time finding a job. It's because his car wasn't working. He didn't have money to fix it because he lost his job. Before he knew it, this kid was literally on the street. He was homeless for a number of weeks. And, uh, you know, it was really, really challenging. I helped him out a little bit. He got a room somewhere. He was able to get himself back. He's now working. And he's now um, rented a cheap room in somebody's house. And he's kind of rebuilding his life. So if you feel like I've got nothing to be grateful for, nothing at all right just take a look around even just something as simple as a comfortable place to lay your head you know whatever it may be the sun is shining today I'm hiding in the shade right now so if I shoot the video in the sun it makes me squint and I squint the whole time so there's things to be grateful for even if it's the simple things so look for those simple things and develop a practice of gratitude because what you're doing is teaching your brain that life's not so bad and that there is good in the world still. Excuse me. So practice it and know that the reason it works is because of the way the brain works. Neuroplasticity, brain science, it's real. It's how things happen. Use it to your benefit or, or not. But if you don't use it to your benefit, by default, you may end up having the brain work against us because you're feeding it instructions that say, think about pain all day, fear it, let's catastrophize about it, let's go down the worst case scenario. So brain science, gratitude uses brain science for good. Catastrophizing our pain and or other symptoms in this future life of horror is using brain science for our detriment. So hopefully this was insightful for you. Um, let me know what you think. Comment below. And please, if you have a topic that you'd, you'd like for me to cover, even if it's a repeat, you know, look, guys, I've got over 120 some odd videos from the past four and a half months. Um, there's going to be some repeating topics. The good news is, if I'm going to go on a topic that I know I've talked about before, I don't go back and study what I said the first time. So. Even if I'm talking about brain science and neuroplasticity for the fourth time, which I think it is, it all still comes out differently. And maybe this one will resonate with you a little bit different than a previous one. And if you don't know, go back to YouTube, search for Pain Free You channel, click on the videos link, and there you will see over a hundred of my videos indexed nicely with the thumbnails and the descriptions and 
and that's a real good way to say, hey, did Dan cover this topic before? Plus, on YouTube, once you get to the channel and you're looking at all the videos, there's a little search bar. It looks like a little, you know, uh, not a microscope, um, looking glass. Anyway, you can actually search for topics like feeling emotions or neuroplasticity or fear, right? And you'll find YouTube will dish up to you, hey, here's all the videos Dan talked about fear in or where fear was at least in the title of the video. So take advantage of those old videos. If you would like a topic to be covered, please let me know. The topic from a couple of days ago about conditioned responses came about from one of you guys asking me to cover that topic because this gentleman was experiencing that conditioned response. He knows what it is, but he wasn't quite sure how to decondition. So anyway, love you guys a lot. I'm loving this community. The Pain For You group is now just about 300 members. It was at 299 earlier. We'll see if we can cross that 300, 300 person mark soon. And uh, really appreciate you guys. So keep the comments coming. Keep the suggestions coming, and we'll talk to you in the next video. See you tomorrow.